it can be a really good training stimulus. There, there are um, cases where shortchanging your recovery in lieu of another hard workout, knowing that you're going to recover really well afterwards, can be a really strong stimulus followed by a, a well-supported adaptive duration or period where you nourish properly, you actually recover, and you get a nice bump in, as a result of it. <clears throat> and and the, the workout combination that you described, Robin, is is perfect for that. And it's not, not even perfect for that because this isn't two high-intensity workouts. It's a, a high-intensity workout followed by a low-intensity workout. Yeah, a couple sprints, but they're not going to have a tremendous impact on anything other than neuromuscular. So that combination definitely works for me, and a lot of pro riders do exactly that. And they happen to do it every day, but you're, you're doing it and then taking a, a more sufficient rest period. But you, the fact is you're doing that hard workout and then maybe, maybe following it up with a lighter workout in probably somewhat of a glycogen deep, re, or sorry, depleted state, yeah. which is something that, tick, that, that spurs that mitochondrial biogenesis and that improvement in aerobic capacity by just shortchanging your recovery a little bit and doing another even low-intensity workout following. Mm -hmm. So in cases like that, I think it – Absolutely works. What I don't want to see is pe are people frequently jamming all their workouts into the only period of time they have to train because they simply don't have that much time. So doing high intensity workouts basically just to get them done can can kind of fly in the face of their goals. If they're doing a hard workout and then shortchanging their recovery by inserting another hard workout before they've recovered just to get it done, I think there are way more effective ways of going about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is uh, we have in our library a bunch of workouts that are like this that are just one workout where maybe it's an hour of VO2 max and then the, the last hour tacked right onto it yeah is aerobic and that's just what like and, and actually that was Nate's idea because we recognize that some people might want to do their their hard stuff followed by their endurance work right there in the same day because they can't break up two workouts over two days so we mash them together to give people that option yeah. and it's actually a great way to go about it and I like this in terms of scheduling and mental fortitude like I do this it's like my ideal situation is two hour workout. That's like a hard workout. Mm -hmm. I, I pump myself up. I do all the RPE things to, imp to improve it. I sleep well. I eat a little more than the night before. I do like an extra bowl of panda puffs or something mm -hmm. uh, or Ezekiel. And I, I do all my tricks that I can do bread before and I totally fuel during it. And I go, I even, I did it just last week. I tried to even do more carbs during the workout. I had an outstanding workout. The next day, I do Baxter, which is aerobic. Mm -hmm. If I'm feeling bad, I skip it. Next day, easy. And man, when you have, when, when I do that, for me too, I don't recover as well as the normal person. Mm -hmm. um, that it just mentally, like when I, f I know like, hey, tomorrow's gonna be easy no matter what, and tomorrow I'm gonna be able to watch TV. I can't watch TV while I do a two hour hard workout. And then, and then when I'm finishing Baxter, I'm like, oh, Baxter's aerobic for 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, tomorrow's off. Like, this is going to be awesome. And it's just like this. And, and then after it. you get that whole day off, by the, the next day, I'm, like, ready to train again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a uh, – in my situation, though, to Chad's point, I'm fully recovered for the next workout. Yeah. Like, my legs feel good. Um, I'm focused. Yeah. Uh, I'm mentally recovered, and I'm physically recovered. That's the big concern. I mean, you have to be recovered to the point where you can actually make that workout productive. I mean, if you're just slogging through something, maybe not hitting your marks, or even if you are, you're just b digging such a deep hole, and you're not going to be able to recover effectively after that – the training isn't going to trend in the direction you want it to. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. The, I, I almost call this in one respect, like the fire, the firefighter schedule. Um, mm -hmm. I know a lot of them who, you know, their schedules require them yeah. to be gone for yeah. a bit. You got to so do what you got to do. Pack it in when they can. Sure. Um, and yeah. they'll hopefully recover. And that, that really is only contingent on whether or not, <clears throat> excuse me, whether or not you're going to have a, a good patch of recovery following yeah. it. You can't just do that and then shortchange the recovery process. Mm -hmm. It does not work. With your schedule, you could do three workouts a week, three two hour trainer rides a week. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Some people like that. And I bet you, you can kit really, really fast, really fast yeah. on that. Because oh, yeah. each one of those workouts, especially with recovery, it's you get a high good quality. Exactly. High quality and get a bump in fitness. Totally. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I did Leadville on only two-hour rides. Yeah. It's, it's, got, it's crazy what the good, trainer can do. 